Hiro Landucci. Um, I'm gonna start for the end because this is um, I I I, will, I was prepared three case studios to show a little thing the flat Earth based on some observations, but um, maybe I can um, you know um, do it to to show all the three cases that I bring uh, because I want to finish the gravitational um, topic that I'm start. Uh, yesterday, but I'm going to show a little very quickly this. I'm sorry if I go a uh, little speedy, but I, I, I want to try to finish the most I can. So, uh, this is for me is very important because a lot of observations based on flat earth on, and the heliocentric model is uh, based to you know analyze the sky, the heaven. Um, of course, we know that uh, we have. 180, 180 degrees uh, from back to front, and things you know start changing quite a lot when the the, the, the objects or the lights approach the horizon. Uh, after all, nobody see a curvison, you know, on the, uh, always is straight, it's not a curve. But apparently, um, via observation, we. view flight on the plane and you know that the clouds doesn't curve until touch the horizon you know the, the plane then the clouds is always straight so you must be start to take that that things account because uh, we need to try to understand what observe from, from, uh, from the ground uh, with the difference when I'm when you are up in the sky so there, there will be a lot of controversy about this uh, standard refraction thing to just uh, try to justify, uh, justify a few observations uh, when the object has cut off uh, based on the line of the horizon or supposedly the standard refractions bring up objects from the hidden curve and these kind of things. And I'm going to try to just illustrate via some computer animations, uh, for me at least, uh, based on observation, what is going on on the horizon. Um, so the first thing is that there is, there is uh, some PDF uh, from NASA well, uh, when, um, where they trying to explain to understanding the astronomical refraction um, based on observations when you analyze the the skies and the distant stars and the planet and all these uh, situations that occur uh, in the sky or in the space for them. And um, the first thing, because it's really similar to the atmospheric uh, uh, refraction to the met what, when the meteorologist or the physicist also use. This information is provided for NASA, so you can find it wherever, um, you know, in the official web page. And supposedly, the, anyone who was an astronomer, amateur, or professional, they know that the best observations uh, is must be uh, above the 20 degrees based on the horizon, because supposedly in this uh, gradient area is where you're going to have the most distortions based on uh, refraction. So the first thing is that any, any, in any paper, even in Spanish paper that I uh, uh, cross, uh, you know, in my research, all the time, the first thing that they assume to explain the standard refraction is that you must be uh, assumed that the surface is a flat Earth. So that's, you know, I mean, supposedly, yeah, the Earth is big, it's really big, and we have that feeling that the, always the, the surface of the Earth is flat. But all the time they refer that if you, you know, try to understand what's going on, you keep in mind that the Earth is stationary and is flat, but in reality we are spinning and it's a sphere. So that, you, you know, it starts to contradict. They put in your head uh, how to think and uh, what to think, whatever the case is uh, for having their uh, observation. Because remember the quote of uh, Einstein that says something like, uh, when the fact doesn't match the reality uh, or the math doesn't fact the observations, uh, change the, the, the observation, you know, change the nature to uh, match the math. Uh, something like that, I can remember exactly. But this gradient uh, of um, distortion, the atmospheric distortion, 
at least for me, is very important because I'm going to show some examples. It doesn't matter the altitude of the object that you observe. You're going to have all the time in that area atmospheric distortion. This is from a movie uh, here from the um, Thomas Crown case. I, I think it was made here in uh, in England. And um, this is just a little part of the movie, you know, randomly. Uh, I came across uh, this year, uh, just looking the movie. But here you can see New York when they still have the Twin Towers um, shooting from a boat with the camera just, you know, moving up. I just repeat that part. But you can clearly see how the, the uh, buildings uh, is not just cut off. When the camera starts going down, more buildings is disappear. And when the camera starts going up, more buildings is going to appear. But you always going to have that line that represent where the standard refraction starts to work, start to appear. That is what is this, uh, a mirage. If you look at the sun, you're going to have that, the same distortion. You're going to have that straight line on the sun when it's passing to the horizon level. And if you keep researching, you understand that this is not any geometrical curve. So if that happened with no geometrical curve, how they, uh, they guys are so sure that when something disappears is because there is a geometrical. Because in science, if you have a model that contradicts the first model, well, we need to start over again until really uh, can and conclude that that is the case. So for astronomical observation, for example, uh, like uh, 3,000 meters above the um, sea level, you can see the same thing. Look how the star trail start accelerated only in that area. And we are not more at uh, sea level. Now we are 3,000. So that happened to the observation, uh, to the observer point of view. It's not something geometrical. It's something more like uh, um, wherever you are at that range in the horizon is going to happen no matter what the altitude. And that what it's telling us is that the horizon level always rise up to our eye level. And that situation only can happen if the surface is flat. If it's a spherical and uh, the Earth is not so big, you know, 12,000 kilometers in di diameter, there is no so big. The math tell, and, uh, the math tell that the uh, above 20 kilometers up in the sky, you must be see the curve without any doubt. And we see a lot of balloon footage uh, above 40 kilometers, even the go fast rocket in 120 kilometers, and the horizon is so well level to the eye observer. So you can see here how the light starts to accelerate down. They never go up. There is not any real experiment that shows that something which is totally high behind the horizons rise up. We have cases with mountains uh, supposedly 400 meters totally disappear and rise up to the horizon uh, without any distortion. That's the thing, the thing that when you observe this supposedly phenomena, we don't see distortion in the image. They present like, no, it's rising up the object, the standard refraction rise up the object in perfect clear image. And that is it's impossible. You're always going to have that uh, wave distort, you know, turbulence distortion, when this occur, you know, if you see clear image, it's because that image is as is it. It's not because it's, it's escape that gradient. So what is happening, I, I create uh, just a simple computer simulation uh, based on, uh, I, I, I do this kind of things a lot. Maybe you can see me on Globebuster and then in, in that shows, I explain a little bit more uh, specific, but here is, the observation on the sun is generated uh, via computer. And you can see, and uh, in reality, we can also find this kind of uh, observation, maybe because the projector is burning up a little bit the light. But this is, you can see here, uh, it's a little stretch. It's like a sphere, it's, it's uh, like a, an asteroid. It's not uh, really a circle, a perfect circle. And a lot of time when you look the sun, in the horizon, what you're going to find is that the sun lose the spherical or the circle shape and start to, you know, like a stretch in the uh, size, uh, forming this oval. 
that is an indication that we live in the personal atmospherical dome based on the standard refraction. Remember the name is standard refraction, it's not standard curve based on refraction. It just, yeah, there is a standard refraction because we live with, uh, inside the fluid, inside the gases. So we're going to have a standard refraction. That doesn't mean that it exists a geometrical curve. What they did is just a, a reverse engineering of the atmospherical distortions passing to a uh, supposedly geometrical curve. That is why when they make this kind of measurement, they assume that if you see object that uh, it's impossible to see in reality, well, the radio of the Earth, instead of being 6,341 kilometers, now the radio of the Earth is 7,800 kilometers. So <laughs> why <laughs> is uh, you doing that? That is not, you can't do that, you know? So what is happened here in this um, computer animation is I split in four different view uh, because we don't have the, uh, you know, we don't have the possibility, the opportunity to go outside the systems and see how it's work from outside. So we are limited in that, at least in, you know, material world. Maybe in the spiritual world, you can see things that you cannot see if you are in this, uh, um, gradient of perception. So this camera here, the the first, uh, well, I have the, my mouse here. This camera here is the same as, as this one. Here is in full screen, but I make it just in a quarter of the screen. And this is the same movement, the same animation, the same light source passing by from 180 degrees to the front, back to front, but with the possibility to see from outside. and this is simulated like a uh, atmosphere locally atmosphere uh, from any observer uh, i make this with the software with the render and shine called arnold which is a uh, um, first class kind of refraction uh, reflection lighting conditions gi Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. I can show how I did it. Uh, this is not the, the, the. I don't have the time to do it now. But uh, what, if any uh, out uh, out there want to, I explain. I can explain after the presentation. So this is the front view. This is the side view, and this is another side view, a little more, a little more close because here is that atmosphere, and the same thing is here with a little big, you know, little zoom. So what happened in reality with all the lights above us is this. And I'm going to explain now, okay? What we see is this situation. If you are inside of this atmosphere, what you're going to see is when you have the, light, the, the sun straight above you, it's going to be more small than, one going, than when it's going to be in front. So that contradicts a little, uh, quite a lot, the heliocentric model. At least you assume that the atmosphere acting at, as a lens. So if you assume that, well, there is no geometrical curve because you have just that in that as assumption one problem to really say no there is a geometrical curve you fly on the plane and you know that the clouds doesn't curve until touch the horizon you know the, the plane then the clouds is always straight so you must be start to take that that things account because uh, we need to try to understand what observe from from, uh, from the ground uh, with the difference when I'm when you are up in the sky, so there there will be a lot of controversy about this uh, standard refraction thing to just uh, try to justify uh, justify a few observations uh, when the object has cut off uh, based on the line of the horizon or supposedly the standard refractions bring up objects from the hidden curve and these kind of things. And I'm going to try to just illustrate via some computer animations, uh, for me at least, uh, based on observation, what is going on on the horizon. Um, so the first thing is that there is, there is uh, some PDF uh, from NASA well, uh, when um, where they trying to explain to understanding the astronomical refraction um, based on observations when you analyze the the skies and the distant stars and the planet and all these uh, situations that occur uh, in the sky 
or in the space for them. And um, the first thing, because it's really similar to the atmospheric uh, uh, refraction to the met what, when the meteorologist or the physicist also use. This information is provided for NASA, so you can find it wherever, um, you know, in the official web page. And supposedly, the, anyone who was an astronomer, amateur, or professional, they know that the best observations uh, is must be uh, above the 20 degrees based on the horizon, because supposedly in this uh, gradient area is where you're going to have the most distortions based on uh, refraction. So the first thing is that any, any, in any paper, even in Spanish paper that I uh, uh, cross, uh, you know, in my research, all the time the first thing that they assume to explain the standard refraction is that you must be uh, assumed that the surface is a flat Earth. So that's, you know, I mean, supposedly, yeah, the Earth is big, it's really big, and we have that feeling that the, always the, the surface of the Earth is flat. But all the time they refer that if you, you know, try to understand what's going on, you keep in mind that the Earth is stationary and is flat. But in reality, we are spinning and it's a sphere. So that, you know, it starts to contradict. They put in your head uh, how to think and uh, what to think, whatever the case is uh, for having their uh, observation. Because remember the quote of uh, Einstein that says something like, uh, when the fact doesn't match the reality uh, or the math doesn't fact the observations, uh, change the, the, the observation, you know, change the nature to uh, match the math. Uh, something like that, I can remember exactly. But this gradient uh, of um, distortion, the atmospheric distortion, at least for me, is very important because I'm going to show some examples. It doesn't matter the altitude of the object that you observe. You're going to have all the time in that area atmospheric distortion. This is from a movie uh, here from the um, Thomas Crown case. I, I think this was made here in in England. And um, this is just a little part of the movie, you know, randomly. Uh, I came across uh, this year, uh, just looking the movie. But here you can see New York, when they still have the Twin Towers, um, shooting from a boat with the camera just, you know, moving up. I just repeat that part. But you can clearly see how the, the uh, buildings uh, is not just cut off. When the camera start going down, more buildings is disappear. And when the camera start going up, more building is going to appear. But you always going to have that line that represent where the standard refraction starts to work, start to appear. That is what is this, uh, a mirage. If you look at the sun, you're going to have that the same distortion. You're going to have that straight line on the sun when it's passing to the horizon level. And if you keep researching, you understand that this is not any geometrical curve. So if that happened with no geometrical curve, how they, uh, they guys are so sure that when something disappears is because there is a geometrical. Because in science, if you have a model that contradicts the first model, well, we need to start over again until really uh, can and conclude that that is the case. So for astronomical observation, for example, uh, like uh, 3,000 meters above the um, sea level, you can see the same thing. Look how the star trail start accelerated only in that area. And we are not more at uh, sea level. Now we are 3,000. So that happened to the observation, uh, to the observer point of view. It's not something geometrical. It's something more like. Uh, um, wherever you are at that range in the horizon is going to happen, no matter what the altitude. And that what it's telling us is that the horizon level always rise up to our eye level. And that situation only can happen if the surface is flat. If it's a spherical, and uh, the Earth is not so big, you know, 12,000 kilometers in di diameter, there is no so big. The math tell and uh, the math tell that the uh, above 20 kilometers up in the sky, you must be see the curve without any doubt. And we see a lot of balloon footage uh, above 40 kilometers, even the 
go fast rocket in 120 kilometers and the horizon is always level to the eye observer. So you can see here how the light start to accelerate down. They never go up. There is not any real experiment that shows that something which is totally high behind the horizons rise up. We have cases with mountains uh, supposedly 400 meters totally disappear and rise up to the horizon uh, without any distortion. That's the thing, the thing that when you observe this supposedly phenomena, we don't see distortion in the image. They present like, no, it's rising up the object, the standard refraction rise up the object in perfect clear image. And that is it's impossible. You're always going to have that uh, wave distortion, you know, turbulence distortion. When this occur, you don't go, if you see clear image, it's because that image is as is it. It's not because, it's, it's escape that gradient. So what is happening, I, I create uh, just a simple computer simulation uh, based on, uh, I, I, I do these kind of things a lot. Maybe you can see me on Globebuster and then in, in that shows I explain a little bit more uh, specific. But here is the observation on the sun. It's generated uh, via computer. And you can see, and uh, in reality, we can also find this kind of uh, observation, maybe because the projector is burning up a little bit the light. But this is, you can see here, uh, it's a little stretch. It's like a sphere, it's, it's uh, like a, an asteroid. It's not uh, really a circle, a perfect circle. And a lot of time, when you look the sun in the horizon, what you're going to find is that the sun lose the spherical or the circle shape and start to, you know, like a stretch in the uh, size, uh, forming this oval. That is an indication that we live in the personal atmospherical dome based on the standard refraction. Remember the name is standard refraction, you not standard curve based on refraction. It just, yeah, there is a standard refraction because we live with, uh, inside the fluid, inside the gases. So we're going to have a standard refraction. That doesn't mean that it exists a geometrical curve. What they did is just a, a reverse engineering of the atmospherical distortions passing to uh, supposedly a geometrical curve. That is why when they make this kind of measurement, they assume that if you see object that uh, it's impossible to see in reality. Well, the radius of the Earth, instead of being 6,341 kilometers, now the radius of the Earth is 7,800 kilometers. So <laughs> why <laughs> is uh, you doing that? That is not, you can't do that, you know? So what is happening here in this um, computer animation is I split in four different view uh, because we don't have the uh, you know we don't have the possibility the opportunity to go outside the systems and see how it's work from outside. So we are limited in that at least in you know material world. Maybe in the spiritual world you can see things that you cannot see if you are in this uh, um, gradient of perception. So this camera here, the the first, uh, well, I have the, my mouse here. This camera here is the same as, as this one. Here is in full screen, but I make it just in a quarter of the screen. And this is the same movement, the same animation, the same light source passing by from 180 degrees to the front, back to front, but with the possibility to see from outside. And this is simulated like a atmosphere, locally atmosphere, uh, from any observer. Uh, I make this with the software, with the render and shine called Arnold, which is a uh, um, first class kind of refraction, uh, reflection, lighting conditions, GI, etc., etc., etc. I can show how I did it. Uh, this is not the, 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 I don't have the time to do it now, but uh, what, if any out, uh, out there want to, I explain, I can explain after the presentation. So this is the front view, this is the side view, and this is another side view, a little more, a little more close, because here is that atmosphere, and the same thing is here with a little big, you know, little zoom. So what happened in reality with all the lights above us is this. And I'm going to explain now, okay? What we see is this situation. If you are inside of this atmosphere, 
what you're gonna see is when you have the light, the, the sun straight above you, it's gonna be more small than one point than when it's gonna be in front. So that contradicts a little, uh, quite a lot the heliocentric model. At least you assume that the atmosphere acting at, as a lens. So if you assume that, well, there is no geometrical curve because you have just that in that as assumption one problem to really say no there is a geometrical curve there is no other way no because you assume there is a lens in distortion and we have evidence of that so what we see is look the reflection this is the zenith and no we, we have here but if this is the observer as long the sun or the stars or the moon start going out in perspective really straight not in straight it's in a circle but our our ration view is so small that we just see we just perceive the curve as straight diagonal line but that diagonal line that you can observe in some part of the world is, is just a little part of the arc above us so what you're gonna see is like a, this observer as the sun or the light source go away where is now C that that source of light? You see, on the horizon, but always, all the time, is above us. It's never be at the horizon level. So that is, you know, very quickly and very shortly explanation trying to illustrate um, where is real happen in the horizon, and there is not a geometrical curve at all. We don't have that ev ev evidence. So if anybody can, uh, you know, uh, show us something like that, we can, you know, more than happy to see it. In fact, we have uh, a property of the light called an isotrophic uh, refraction and reflection, which is when the one, only one light source expand and form like a full circle in the sky. And that is also an evidence that our perception and our gases and atmosphere uh, make the light curve. So if the light curve, the image that the light bounds and produce is also it's gonna be curved. Uh, I have here the same simulation, the same atmosphere, the same light source, which is always above. You're gonna see the same behavior of the light, but this time when I'm when I'm activate the anisotrophic property of the light, what you're gonna see is that one only one uh, um, point source of light is gonna do this, and with that have in our reality world. So <laughs> what you see there is uh, an isotrophic uh, property caused by the atmosphere, making a complete a 360 degree uh, light, you know, surround us. And is that the sun that produced that? That is why Newton was so, so obsessed trying to study the light maybe, you know, and really the light is a mystery for us. We know there is no particles in the light. So the light doesn't curve via gravity. We know that the light is a wave, and we have medium where the light curves, and that is the sometimes gases, sometimes uh, is a ether, which interact with light, and the air interact with the vibration of sounds. So we have all this evidence that we cannot live. We are really scientists. We we cannot leave these kind of things. Uh, you know, uh, just turn the head and and make that uh, pretend that these things uh, are just illusions. There are no illusions, there are real facts that we maybe don't understand yet, but I think we are on the path to understand it. So this is the, that is why, you know, real science talk about the apparent position of the object. Because you can, it's impossible to track the position of the star, of the moon, of the planets, of the sun, uh, assuming that what you saw or what you see is the actual object out there. It's not. It's like see an object, you know, from uh, below the swimming pool and trying to ma to triangulate the light source as outside the water. No, you, 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 your limit is the sky. Our limit, not, not just physically, also visually, is the sky. The sky is like a screen projector where all these gases compress the light and that is Maybe the moon is spherical. Yeah. What uh, well, I mean, what's going on? Is this spherical? Nothing. <laughs> we are not a planet. That is the, the thing that we must uh, uh, understand. We are a plane of existence, not a planet. Planet etymology, the planet is wandering star. It's a light that moves, 
Nobody can observe that that, that thing up there has even dirt or air, or it's a bit terraforming. So a quick example that I'm trying to illustrate is, this is uh, it's an old documentary uh, from French guys matching our observation of the famous Fata Morgana in the three layers. What, that is when, uh, how in reality works. We have the original image, we have the uh, superior mirage and uh, superior superior mirage. But to call things superior or, um, what is the name of, uh, in English of the other one? Uh, inferior mirage is because you must be have line, you know, a, a line of reference. <laughs> So it's called superior mirage because never happened at the horizon level. It's happened above the horizon level, above the real image. That is why it's called superior, and that is why it's called inferior, because it's happening below the horizon line. So when you see an object at the horizon level, it's because it's the object. And the only thing that could happen is that a tiny gradient uh, on the bottom part distort the image, and if you add, add that kind of uh, situation, the perspective, done, you have the, the image cut down. It's simply as that. And here you can see how it works. Uh, the situation is like, a, this, w w how is the setup? The setup is this paper here, all the time, is at the eye level view viewer of the observer. It's impossible, nobody recreates something that is hide at the horizon of the observer, rise up perfectly and match it the horizon line. So we are waiting for that supposedly standard refraction uh, based on that uh, assumption. It's an assumption that the, the standard refraction rise up object in perfect clear images. So that is a real superior mirage with inferior mirage. That is how reality works then you can have in time lapse how the superior mirage forming and unforming. And uh, it's impossible to assume that some objects like uh, Chicago skyline is a superior mirage. There is no proof of that. Uh, at least based on my research and research of other scientists, other physicists, because a lot of uh, heliocentric guys believe that there is no any professional astrophysic or physicist involved in flat Earth because they maybe don't see on TV or on mass media. But I, in Argentina, I have contact of, with a few of them. Uh, some of those helped me to do the, the video about gravity. Some of them helped me to understand these kind of things. I just recreate the, the, the graphical, you know, the computer animation part. But uh, uh, all this situation based on perspective, based on diffraction of the light is also very important, not just refraction. The angular size is really important. This is a camera used for surveillance that you can see the boat perfectly, uh, 30 kilometers, just with uh, fog on, you know, anti-fog on, for example. But you. You see a lot of these cases where uh, things appear again in the horizon based on the power of the camera or the telescope that you use. So we know uh, for sure there is no any uh, real evidence uh, of the curvature in the horizon. Nobody showed that. And uh, in you know in homemade experiments you can see simulating the atmosphere based on this plastic sheet. Uh, you can see how the image is cut off on the flat surface. And in fact, uh, not just in real world uh, scenarios, I recreate this uh, thing, th this same thing on computer because that is my uh, area work. So I feel comfortable there uh, in that um, situation. So I try to match reality also in computer animation and I use the same software and I'm going to explain a little bit this um, setup. And you have, this is the atmosphere with, you know, it's a box because I just, what I did is uh, assuming that we have this, uh, you know, like this volume representing in that box of air and just the corners make this little arc. That is why you see that part black because there is a lot of segments to curve the geometry. This is like a sky, this, this sky city is this, but the thing is geometrically, 
What you see geometrically, if the world doesn't have any kind of atmosphere, you're going to see this image here. Of course, the camera is making a, zoo, a zoom, so you can see that it's like a, a bridge. There is this uh, arc uh, geometry there, and this something happening in the floor. But when you process that and rendering, uh, contemplating, you know, contemplating this atmosphere thing, what happened with the sky city is cut off, and I, I as I move that volume of air coming and going, you can see how the image on the horizon, this is real time rendering, you can see how the image get bigger and or smaller and disappear a little more or a little less. And uh, here you can see, for example, a camera, the, the, the camera is this, geometrically speaking is this, but here you cannot see the bridge and this is not under the surface. This is a flat surface, completely, it's called infinite plane. I use in this time Cinema 4D. And you can see, you cannot uh, see the bottom part. So, this thing in computer show the reality. These homemade videos show the reality. The other documentary that I show, which is based on physical uh, experiment on lab, show there is no curve. So, there is no curve. <laughs> So, well, we have the famous guy from the news and all like that. Of course, he, he, he needs to retract himself because uh, after saying that the, that supposedly that was a superior mirage, they received so many mails that they, uh, when when year later, they need to clarify that well, that. So it's not geometrically <laughs> anything, you know, it's just an atmospheric refraction. Uh, so this is what happened. I, I, I bring a, a, a few other examples based on the Carnival Mountains and things like that, but I, I really don't have time to, to show. But uh, I'm going to just approach this situation because here you can see the same image at the same distance showing that the famous floating island. Why? Because you can you, you lose the bottom part, but not based on geometry, based on the standard refraction. The same image you can see without any, uh, or with little standard refraction. So you can see that the image is not stretched, you know, it's not pushing up from down. The mountain you can clearly see in the original size. And here is the superior mirage of the same mountain and you lose the bottom part in that gradient of 20 degrees angle. So this is the same image, this is the same distance, in the same conditions of the camera, with different atmospheric conditions, and that is what happened in reality. So that is what happened in reality. It's not the other thing, you know? Uh, or at least uh, we need more evidence to assume that there is a geometrical curve. And um, in fact, you must be, be aware that the, in the spectrum of the lights, the red color is the color that uh, represents the more uh, you know, slow of the frequency of the light. And the blue is the most highest frequency of the light. So when the supposedly superior mirage, the most commonly superior mirage appear is on the sunset or in the dusk. And that is when you see the sky red. So that means that the light slow down, no uh, go fast. So if the light go down, it's because the light is turning the image down, no up, because it's slow down. So how could be in those uh, scenarios two objects rise up? Uh, there is the famous experiment of Michelson Morley, uh, but this time uh, in this setup, the physicists add a uh, heat to the wave of the light, uh, and you can clearly see how the wavelength of the light is go down. This is the uh, where the light is projected. They use this machine to put heat on the air, and the image go down, like what happened in sunset. So we also have that evidence that the, you know. So there is a lot of, I mean, uh, 
if you put you know in the balance, I, I think we have more evidence uh, and proof and observable facts that uh, you know bring the things more into a flat horizon than than, than the curved horizon. That is the, the fact, you know, it's simply as that. We need to keep researching and, you know, we need to keep going and going and going. But the, the reality is that is all the proof, I mean, in percentage, how much, uh, how much proof we have uh, to assume that the Earth is flat, then there is a spherical. Unbiased proof, I mean, because if you want to believe in NASA or, or, or you know, all the space agency, well, Nobody here can leave the Earth. Nobody. So at one point, it's a belief that the Earth is spherical. For at least for ourselves. Maybe for the astronauts, that is the only 100 guys who goes enough outside to see that the Earth is spherical. And we know the background of the uh, astronaut guys. So if you decide to believe Freemasonry and well, that is your life. You can do whatever you want. I try to believe what nature showed me. And nature never showed that the horizon curve at any altitude and any kind of behavior. So, uh, did it tell me that I have only 10 minutes? So, I'm going to, you know, uh, shift here because I, I, I can't show all the electrical models. Um, that is a sad news. <laughs> I have all the, you know, the electrical universe that uh, show us how the the sun and the earth is forming, and you can replicate uh, a lot of. Uh, let me just show. For example, the crater on the moon and the uh, formation of mountain valleys, dunes in the earth only can be replicated uh, via electricity, not via evolution, but the electricity. We have craters on the moon. We have like three, four types of crater on the moon that only are at 90 degrees. I mean, there is no, uh, I don't know the name in English, but there is no any proof that supposedly a meteor impact come and, you know, make this the, the kind of, you know, that, uh, leaving all the hole behind with all the dirt accumulating to the sides and that kind of thing. All the craters you see, it's like a straight impact, right? So <laughs> if you want to believe that all the meteors come in the straight path, well, man, <laughs> I can do nothing to you. But the reality thing is there is a type of creature that you cannot even explain assuming that, what I'm going to show you. But this is an electrical machine. This is uh, doing but this guy and the uh, electrical universe. There are no flat earth, but they make a really great research and they don't believe in the big bang theory or the heliocentric model as nasa presents us so you can see simple crater created via electricity totally equally you can see the overlapping circular crater change created via electricity this is cannot explain via meteor no way because there are overlapping circles that is not just uh, a, a supposedly impact you know just doing this behavior this is overlapping circles so what happened there yeah, uh, yeah. meteor shower impact one <laughs> yeah, you, you know you, you must be terminator two to impact like that so uh, i don't think that the universe behave in that way but so then you have complex crater and that just uh, started to be a little uh, problem because look how deep these things are it's just a tiny wall. How could be so flat the impact area? And if you if you believe in the distances and the size of these crater uh, critters via heliocentric model, there are kilometers of the uh, diameter. So what happened here? <laughs> uh, is the metal the moon is is based on metal or what? So via electricity, no problem. You can recreate it. And then come the most, uh, you know, um, problem for, for to trying to explain, which is the central peak creatures. So, and it's like a, a crater that has have another mountain inside of the same crater. And the only way you can do it, at least in experiment and lab, like science uh, like to work, is via electricity. Look up there when 
they plug electricity from the crater and also rise up the dust forming that mountain. This crater is cannot be explained by a heliocentric model. Even our rivers, our mountains, you can explain with electricity. Not just that, uh, also you can explain that the mountains, the volcans, the valleys, the dunes, the <laughs> everything. <laughs> so that is the concept of Zeus. What Zeus used to create the world, the lighting. So our world is created by electromagnetism. Who did it? What did it? <laughs> I don't know, but uh, uh, there is no evolution in our creation. That's for sure. Uh, all models can be replicated via electricity. And uh, unfortunately, nobody lives supposedly 200 million years to see and making time lapse. Uh, even Nikon P900 can make that kind of time lapse. So <laughs> sorry, but the only proof that we can achieve is this kind of things. You can see that land formation, even cells formation, you can replicate it via electricity. Uh, not only that, the meteors, if you have enough power in the atmosphere via electricity, you can create spherical artifacts. And uh, in fact, the, in the old days, um, the scientists also talking about electricity balls. And you can see here, this is a supposedly meteor, but when you see uh, it's a light, it's just a light. This is really, really close. This is not 100 kilometers. And look the tendrils that forms. That tendrils are electrical. There are no fire. It's electrical tendrils. So of course, we have companies. If you have $10,000 and one, you want to make a really good party, you can contract Ale, and they send you an artificial meteor shower, no problem. So <laughs> you can do it. And uh, the, supposedly, they're they going to use uh, uh, in the next only Olympics game. So we can see that. But there is a lot of trickery going on. But uh, via electricity, you can explain a lot of things. I don't have time to to keep going and going and going. I, I will really love like to, um, yeah, to explain, for example, via heliocentric model, the selenium eclipse, when the sun and the moon appear in the same horizon line, which geometrically is impossible. And remember, that image on the horizon of the moon eclipsing by the sun and the same altitude is not at the horizon level. They are here. Some object could be here projecting the shadow. That has more sense than something that even the heliocentric model can explain, and they, they, they don't tell this. For example, for example, the space, uh, one of the most uh, web page uh, that talks about space, they say, see total eclipse of the moon and the rising sun simultaneously, a phenomenon that celestial geometry says cannot happen. <laughs> because cannot happen. Not the standard reflection. What standard? It's a standard reflection, yeah. But we see the sun and the moon not just touching the horizon. We see the, 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 the sun above even the horizon. So supposedly that image of the moon was rise up from where? And the shadow contradicts because the shadow is uh, coming from the other side that supposedly uh, must be happened. This guy even, he can explain it, why the shadow come from top to bottom. So there is a lot of situation that we must be aware of and uh, re uh, reanalysis. But I I gonna finish the presentation with this one minute, just one minute uh, video, and then if you have some question, maybe I can explain it. Maybe not. Uh, what is is here? Um, this is from a guy from Spain. He's not a flat earther, but he's an amateur uh, astronomer, and he he filmed um, the Southern Cross from the 20, 28 uh, degrees north above the equator, with something that cannot happen in the heliocentric model. Even Stellarium and that kind of software tell that that cannot be happen. And but if you think in uh, flat Earth and really good atmospheric condition and really good equipment, you can achieve. Maybe not to see at the sea level from New York to London, like Bill Neal pretends, you know? <laughs> but uh, 
I, I have a guy who, you know, um, if you want, you can read it or you can hear the voice. The original video is in Spanish, so I. I, I don't know what to say. All that's left for me to do is to go and pronounce it so that I can take a look at the Southern Cross constellation. How about. What? Sorry? Okay, it's a constellation. How about. What do you come along? The Cross is a constellation that is unique to the Southern Hemisphere. How is the Southern Cross peculiar? The answer is very simple. It is only visible in the Southern Hemisphere. In the Northern Hemisphere, it can be seen up to 25 degrees north. I live in the Canary Islands, in Grand Canary, actually. This island is located at 28 degrees north. In theory, I am too far north to be able to see the entire constellation. According to Stellarium, only Juxtacusum, Decrux, Gacrux, and Mimosa are visible. Acrux, however, is below the horizon line. Theoretically, that's how it is, but not in practice. Currently, I am at 1,929 meters above the sea level. I'm not sure this can be seen here. I think it can. South is straight ahead. At this very moment, we can see the red line. I hope it can be seen here. This red line is straight the red line. And the southern cross. In two to three hours, we will see above the red line, and it is the horizon from my standpoint. We will be able to see the Southern Cross emerge. All right, then, this is the last picture. We have the Southern Cross above the horizon. So, mission accomplished. You can see fully clearly above the horizon. It's not just, you know, touching the atmospheric distortion, it's clearly above. Theoretically, impossible. In practice, we can do it. So, this is our thing that we must be. Consider, you know, we have seen the southern cross 28 degrees above equator and really, really up in the sky. So, I'm not an astronomer, um, but these kind of things I, I like to share with some astronomer in Argentina. And there are no flat earthers, uh, but they, you know, just call, you know, at, uh, I never saw this kind of thing, so I, I'm going to study. And that is the propose, you know. I mean, the propose here is just uh, don't believe what the institution says because we know where these institutions come from. Uh, I, I, I did my presentation yesterday trying to show that background. So I don't have more time to keep <laughs> going with the presentation, but thank for the time and uh, thank you for, for you know, listening to uh, this kind of uh, stuff. Thank you. If you have any questions, uh, maybe I can answer, maybe not. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ruben, are you there? Okay. Uh, no, no, I asked for Ruben, maybe because maybe I don't understand the, the question and he can translate me. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm from IML Media, so the greatest flat earth show you've never heard of. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've done that. Um, <laughs> um, it was just a quick question, really, of, as you touched up the trees and with regards to the electrical construction. 
Yeah. And I just wondered if you've got any data with regards to um, the cell structure you see, or whether you're getting a, a formation of a crystalline lattice within the geometry. Yeah, well, I bring just um, you know um, cheap egg image uh, of that. Um, I really uh, because. Uh, some topics I, I consider, you know, professional, available to explain things, and some others I'm just uh, doing as researcher and try to share the knowledge for the people and leave the responsibility to go deeper to anyone who listen my research. So that is why I say some things I can answer, something not. Uh, but I trying to find here. Let me just. Uh, I don't know if I understand uh, pretty well what you said, but I, I think so. So, uh, via uh, the electrical model, you can explain not just the moon of the rock of our uh, terrestrial plane, uh, also galaxies, also you know nebulas and all kind of things created, and also these this type of hexagonal rocks uh, formations. You can. Uh, not, not just explain it, also you can uh, replicate. Uh, I don't know if the question comes from uh, that one. So what I really recommend you is that you enter into the Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt project, which is the guys behind the uni electric universe. And these things, you have fully videos which um, cover almost everything with data, with measurements, with papers, with uh, interviews. Uh, lab experiments, uh, that kind of thing. Hello? Yeah, there we go. It was when he was talking about the light of standard refraction and kind of addressing some of the Baller 76R formulas. Um, and in regards to how the light isn't bending, it's just following Fermat's principle as it changes through density. Yes. Um, I'd come across a paper, we'd, we'd announced it, where it actually, the, it's in computer modeling like yours, but they actually demonstrate how you can get it to curve at, well, it was 6, 6, oh, uh, and that actually requires a degree change of, I think it's something like, uh, I think it was about 9.8 degrees per 100 meters. So the only way you could get light following any, any significant distance is to get that temperature gradient change through that. And the only place they theorize it's possible is in extreme polar conditions where it's at minus 40 starting point and you actually get up to a slightly warmer atmosphere. So, well, I, I don't know if I understand exactly the question, but what I, what I see with those kind of um, situation is that uh, we have records that uh, some guys in the early uh, 20th century, uh, they crash their planes in the Antarctic uh, because they, they, they believe that um, from nothing appears, you know, like a huge wall, which is in fact was a super superior mirage. So we have strange things happen in those, uh, you know, extreme weather conditions, uh, but um, I, I try to find the sorry uh, the uh, the file that I have here, but we also have uh, you know in the Arctic I show some of the uh, those superior mirage uh, I think it was here uh, here we have you know in the Arctic regions also forming a standard superior mirage and things like that the the, the situation for me is that. In com because I am a computer uh, technical director. So in computer, you can make whatever you want. Uh, and that is a starting point for me. Then you need to at least make some home base experiments and then try to uh, take that to the next level, which was control and environment uh, experiment. And with this situation of the standard refractions uh, based on the heliocentric model, we don't have uh, you know, uh, experiments a control experiment that shows that supposedly we have that rise up object or that kind of things. That is my, my point of view. I don't know if uh, answer your question, but thank you. I'm afraid this has to be the last question, guys, because we're running out of time.
Do you think the Carmen line at 111 kilometers is the start of the celestial barrier or the firmament? If so, doesn't it lower at the north center? Is it like a collapsed bubble or maybe broke? I um, you tell me that at 100 kilometers uh, finish the, or start the limit of the um, sky and maybe above that you you have the dome. That's what um, I have a research made. At, I don't have that video in, in, in English um, the last year um, uh, when I come across these gases that produce the uh, atmosphere atmosphere barrier. Uh, I don't believe in the uh, dome, uh, you know, technically solid dome, uh, but I believe that uh, there is a gas up there that only was, uh, not only, but the majority was produced by vulcans when they make eruptions. The gas is called hexafluorur, um, and that is a gas six times more dense than the air. So um, that gas d has a duration of 3,000 years. Anytime a bull can make an uh, eruption, so you can start counting from the beginning until our days how many volcans make that. And that creates a, a gas barrier uh, with uh, properties of this gas of six times the density of the air. So for the official science, uh, the Karma line is 100 kilometers. And uh, I don't see any solid, uh, you know, dome. But what I see is, is that up there, uh, via the temperature, you can achieve uh, Kelvin temperatures at zero, for example. And uh, when you start to think in this uh, super fluid, uh, that we can replicate here on Earth with where you lose any, for example, index of refraction. So you can see nothing. You, you see like it's invisible thing because you, you don't have the index of refraction. Uh, so when you see up in the sky, you believe that it's empty, but it's full of gases. And some of the gases are, are really heavy and really, you know, uh, doesn't allow to penetrate our technology. You can imagine all the planes and rockets are made to interact with uh, air friction. And you start going up, going up, going up, and suddenly you start having this kind of gases that, that is six times heavier than the air. So the aerodynamics there, I believe, is going to be a little difficult to pass over. So that is why all the space agency send uh, up there sounding rocket, which is just a little tube like this. Uh, three, four meters high, and they send really quickly this rocket. And you can see after 19 kilometers, when they achieve this 100 kilometers, the rocket start to behave like be in some kind of liquid. And here on Earth, I, I, I can show you that. But here on Earth, we have this, that same experiment on this gas, with the object start floating, like be in the water. Maybe that is the symbology that up there are water. The gas is in state of the water. So I don't think we can go to the moon or the sun, like NASA is going to send a proof to the sun in a, few, in a few weeks. So I don't think we can achieve that. That is celestial, is like a spiritual round. Uh, we are not allowed to go physically. That is my interpretation. Thanks, Al. If you start to thinking in at what altitude, you can find the, the same result. At 20 kilometers, the curve of the air is totally perceptible and no doubt. So when you start to see balloons and rocket launches, you know, it's flat. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter.